At this point, I bet Audi has paid for 10% of the entire MCU budget with their impressive product placement in these movies. What are we, fighting the weather now? Locals say the cyclone had a face. Oh, people see things when they're under stress. Like a giant green hulk, or a Norse god who wields a hammer, or a woman in black spandex wielding a glock. I'm just saying, with the superheroes and villains that exist, is a weather monster that far out of the box? You just need to chill, Hill. 36 seconds of Marvel logo, a minute and 47 seconds into the movie, and after we had to sit through 32 seconds of Sony getting the upper hand logos at the beginning of the movie. Gone, but not forgotten. This year has been nothing short of... It is crazy. It's like insane. Why is the school news station doing an in-memoriam about the dead Avengers at the end of an entire school year? Wouldn't this have been something they broadcast on the first day of school? Closer to the actual deaths? Over five years ago, half of all life in the universe- Again, why is this being discussed on the last day of school? Nearly a year after the unsnap? Wouldn't high school students of all people have gotten beyond that early in the school year and this last day newscast would be about college and valedictorian and, you know, regular high school it makes for a good expositional dump, but it makes no sense in context. Eight months ago, a band of brave heroes brought us back. <laughs> Still calling bullshit on no one appearing in the exact same space as another human being causing some weird mutation strength. But at least the movie chose to show the gym scene in this scenario, as opposed to what happened in the men's room. They called it the blip. Comic Sans. Also, this movie basically ignores the blip, except for this one 60 second news broadcast, which is probably because the filmmakers weren't told the details of Endgame, but ends up feeling like they didn't care about the events of Endgame. I'm gonna buy her a black Dahlia necklace because her favorite flower is the black Dahlia because of, well, the murder. The murder. MJ is f***ed up. Date her at your own risk, dude. I see this ending badly if she's picking favorite flowers based on her favorite murder, or even has a favorite murder. I may not know much, but I do know this. Europeans love Americans. Um, you might want to check that, Ned. According to the published and certified Love Actually documentation, it's Americans who love Europeans. By the way, travel tip, you should probably download a VPN on your phone just so that the government can't track you while we're abroad. Conspiracy theorists. When I blipped back to my apartment, the family that was living there was very confused. I'm sure. And just imagine all the people that blipped back in the middle of the ocean because they were on a boat or landed on the third rail and died because they had been in a subway car. And you know there were some people mid-orgasm. How did that work out for them? Jesus, I think I want a series of movies on various people that blipped back. Maybe not the orgasm people. Can't be said enough, I hate, hate, hate Spider-Man wearing an iron suit. Yes, it does happen in the comics, you f nerds, but it's relatively brief. And this is the second movie he's worn this suit in. And it's just not Spider-Man when he's in an iron armor. That mask CGIing off his head looks insanely stupid. I just want him to pull his mask off. Is that asking too much? You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? Yeah. You don't send Nick Fury to voicemail. Did you hear that? I send everyone to voicemail. Brad Bird could call me and tell me Disney picked up the rights to my books and he wants to direct them. And he would still be saying all that to my voicemail box. Part of it is that I'm half deaf and I don't hear well. And my phone transcribes voicemails to me almost instantly. The other part is that I get so many f***ing calls from scammers, asshats, salesmen, and family members that I am mathematically better off not answering any calls. And math ain't never done lied to me once. Hungry? <gasps> I thought that you could sense that with your... Peter Tingle. Hey, we forgot to mention Spidey Sense in the first movie, so we'll just have a banana in the face gag here, so you don't think we're complete idiots. How would he be able to pack that even if he wanted to? I'm assuming that giant charging port would have to come with it. Good luck explaining that at the airport before boarding an international flight. This looks like a regular airplane, but look closer, and you will see that absolutely no one in coach is wishing they were dead right now. Flash makes fun of Peter about being on an airplane, but also Flash is in first class. And yeah, he's rich, but what kind of a school trip lets individual rich students upgrade to first class on their own? He blipped, so technically Technically, he's 16, not 21. And isn't that what his ID would say? They most certainly would have checked before serving him. Heart of Iron. Heart of Iron. They made a Tony Stark documentary and they chose the title Heart of Iron. Why not Stark Realities? Or why not the MCU? Or Dead Dickhead Now Revered? Or Tony, Tony, Tony? Someone falls asleep on a trip and puts their head on the lap or shoulder of another character and it's awkward cliche. We have a lot in common. So uh, we're boyfriend and girlfriend now. That was fast. I know that's the joke, but still. An eight hour flight feels more like an excuse to get Peter alone for more of this film, and as such, it works. Whatever happened to being an American bachelor in Europe? Peter, those were the words of a boy. And that boy met a woman. Ned is a little too Manny Delgado in this movie for my taste. There's nothing in there. I swear. Yeah, that usually works with customs agents. Also, why wouldn't Aunt May shove that suit under some clothes or something? She knows this is a secret identity, so her disregard for secrecy here makes no sense. Are you telling me that in eight months since the unblippening, airports and public buildings worldwide have all unanimously decided to deify Tony Stark in massive artwork displays? Do you have any idea how long it takes a government to make a decision? Eight months? Can a master painter even finish a portrait this size in that amount of time? Put your bags off. We're gonna meet at the Da Vinci Museum at three. The f 
You have two adults on this student trip and you're not going with them to the museum? You're letting them find their own way? In Venice? Without an adult? What am I watching? What is this? Martin Starr is a great comic actor, but physical comedy isn't necessarily for everyone. He had a good couple moments in Homecoming, and now this movie is tripling down on that teacher you laughed at last time. So we get him falling asleep on Peter, telling marriage sob stories to Peter, and now aping Mr. Bean. Bo, it's the most perfect word in the world. Italians created it, and I just discovered it. What does it mean? That's the thing, it can mean a million things. Not sure how that's cool or helpful. How would anyone know which version of the word Bo you're using? Smurfing Italians. Also, this Bo never comes back again or is referred to throughout the rest of the movie. It's literally just filling and killing time with a word that means nothing. Bo is my new superpower. It's like the anti-aloha. I'm pretty sure the movie Aloha was the anti-aloha. I guess you could suspend my disbelief enough to believe that Mysterio would have his theatrics staged in Venice when Peter is there because, well, Peter is there. Except I don't know how he would know at this point that Peter is also Spider-Man. But regardless, I'm calling bullshit that he would know Peter would be at this exact place at the time he did this, so the whole scenario is built on an Italian river of lies! In all seriousness, what did you think that was going to accomplish? Does Peter often swing on his web by connecting them to the Hudson River? I know people are running for their lives, but you're telling me no one sees this? It's broad daylight, man! And there are so many no one sees this moments later in this movie, I'm giving it five sins right here and now to cover them all. What do you mean it's close to when? November. You didn't check the website? Oh, that's a good idea. Too much teacher! <laughs> Screwball prop comedy in a f***ing Spider-Man movie? There's comedy, and then there's emo Peter dancing to staying alive, and while you're not in that territory, you're closer than I would like you to be. Who is that guy? I don't know, but he's kicking that water's ass. <laughs> Pretty intense scene and all. Too bad we've already seen two much better versions of this scene with the train scene in Spider-Man 2 and the boat scene in Spider-Man Homecoming. And two much better movies, I could add, and I think I will. BuzzFeed says there's a sailor named Morris Bench who was exposed to an experimental underwater generator and got hydro powers. Movie uses a likeness to a character from the comics called Hydro Man, but it isn't actually Hydro Man. However, movie has Flash talk about the origins of Morris Bench, aka Hydro Man from the comics, anyways. You just shot Ned. Just a mild tranquilizer, he'll be all right. Sure, but what if he'd fallen on the side of his neck with the trank dart? Wouldn't it have then shoved the whole thing further into his neck and caused medical problems and I tried to bring you here, you avoided me, and now you're here. What a coincidence. Wait, was this a coincidence? This movie doesn't even know its coincidences from its contrivances. Another person touches that door, you and I are going to attend another funeral. How does Peter have any control over that? There are multiple realities, Peter. This is Earth, Dimension 616. I'm from Earth 833. Because Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse exists, the viewer accepts the idea of multiple universes. But in this world, the multiverse hasn't been explored yet. And it seems like Nick Fury would be on to Mysterio from the beginning. Or simply call Doctor Strange and ask if this is legit. Because this story is suspicious as hell. Don't ever apologize for being the smartest one in the room. The Zuckerberg family motto. I mean, I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, sir. Bitch, please, you've been to space. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'm only human. Captain Marvel. Don't invoke her name. Why not? And for something like this that could destroy the f***ing world, why wouldn't you use Captain Marvel? She's stronger than everyone and everything. You should have heard me on the phone with him. I really gave him hell. All I heard was crying. <sighs> The name of this road in English translates to Nobody Nope Road. The French call it Les No. Peter waited so long to put on these Stark glasses that I actually had forgotten all about them. Why would a high school kid like Peter wait so long to see what a now dead Tony Stark left for? I'm shocked he didn't put them on as soon as they were handed to him, come to think of it. I have access to the entire Stark global security network, including multiple defense satellites, as well as back doors to all major telecommunication networks. Holy God goggles, Batman. Take off your clothes. This is a hell of a thing. Considering her insistence he get naked to try on the suit is only in story service of giving Peter's rival something to use against him with MJ. But in addition to that, this should be creepy. It's played for laughs, but it's a grown woman demanding a teenager take off his clothes. You couldn't think of any better ways to give the rival leverage than this? Initiating strike. Initiating what now? Intercept point determined. Releasing kill vehicle. Peter has already played this game with his first Spidey suit Tony gave him. He should have known as soon as Edith said target, this is what he was asking her to do. Also, I don't care who Tony Stark is, it is insane to think he would just have a weaponized satellite in the sky that could be initiated by someone not understanding a question. I am no science guy, but I don't think that's how momentum works. Once Peter exits the vehicle, he still has forward momentum, but begins to immediately slow, comparable to the bus itself, which continues at the same speed. All I'm saying is Peter should either have landed back on on the roof of the van behind the opening or at least ding the edge of the opening on his way back down. It's clear to me that you were not ready for this. To be fair, he told you that in Venice. Also, isn't this yet another rehash of Homecoming with Fury taking the place of Tony? Is this what we get to look forward to in all these MCU Spider-Man films? Someone will tell him he's not ready to fight the big fight and then he'll do it anyway and come out on top? It's like multiple versions of Rocky 3. Lucky for us, 
We got the best seats in the house. From here on out, I'm shortening too much teacher to TMT. It will save me an entire syllable. And at this point, I will take every ounce of saved breath over this movie that I can get. I'll save you a seat next to me. Zendaya is adorable in this movie. But, well, all I'm saying is don't watch the entirety of Euphoria on HBO right before you watch her in this movie. Because it will be a jarring juxtaposition. Also, jarring juxtaposition is also A, an edgier name in chef circles for the serpent turf. B, what my college girlfriend called sex. C, the name of my cousin's jazz core band. Or D, one's perception of marriage prior to and immediately after the wedding ceremony. And then Peter, whatever you do, please steer the monster away from the opera house. Yeah, Ned, I know. And now so does Betty, because she's right behind you and Ned is not using an inside voice. I would totally kiss you, but I think I just threw up in my mouth a little. You did? You threw up in your mouth a little? How do you not know for sure whether or not you threw up in your mouth? Here's where her dad from the nice guys would chide her. Don't say I think, just to fill space in a sentence. But also, there is not a teenage male alive that would let a little vomit get in the way of some action. The choice is yours. I hear you can get with this, or you can get with that. You can get with this, or you can get with that. You can get with this, or you can get with that. I think I'll get with this, because this is where it's at. This scene where Peter gives his god goggles to Mysterio willingly, his spidey f***ing sense failed him, bro. This movie makes it seem later like he's been struggling for a while with using the Peter Tingle, but other than that banana bull I can't find much early movie evidence of this, and I suspect it was largely left on the cutting room floor. Because maybe he didn't trust me to have Edith, he just trusted me to pick who should. I mean, maybe. But my guess is he wasn't expecting you to pick some rando you met a couple days ago. Peter might as well be giving the glasses to Flash. You stopped the elementals, you saved my life, you saved the world! Peter isn't this dumb, though. Like, I get that he's grieving Tony and maybe not at the top of his game, but even if the Spidey sense is f***ing him over, Peter's own brain should be ringing all the bells right now. Mr. Stark would've really liked you. Have you forgotten how good a judge of character Tony Stark was? He'd have seen through this asshole way back in Venice, and he would have hated a guy that pretends to be a hero through illusions rather than truly doing heroic stuff. To the man who brought us all together, our former boss, Tony Stark. And seriously, f*** you, Moomy. This is now two Spider-Man villains in a row that have been turned into essentially Iron Man villains that Spider-Man has to fight. Is it asking too goddamn much to have a Spider-Man movie be a f***ing Spider-Man movie? Maybe Sony should take this back over. Also, Mysterio is essentially the Mandarin all over again. A rather cool character who has literally been acting the whole time and is uninteresting as hell when his true colors shine. So way to go, Far From Home. You're the Iron Man 3 of Spider-Man movies. But also, world's longest toast ever. Oh, $611 million for my little therapeutic experiment. <laughs> I haven't seen this kind of sh character in the shadows retconning since the last Saw movie. Camp of Science, we're leaving because of witches. That's witchist. That's what it said on the news. And the news never lies. The news that the news never lies about the news is fake news. Oh, good thing MJ happened to be right by the drone projector that Peter caught in his webbing and they could have this awkward conversation on the bridge. Because then Peter would never find out Quentin Beck is a fake and a bad guy and f this movie relies on way too much coincidental coincidences. Wait a minute, does that mean that the elementals are fake? There was fire and destruction. Who would do something like that? Hmm, Peter, who would do that? God, this movie makes Peter Parker dumber than a box of rocks. I am trying to fool 7 billion people here, including Nick Fury, who happens to be the most paranoid and most dangerous person on the planet. Not true. The most paranoid person on the planet is clearly Kanye West. And the most dangerous person on the planet is clearly Kanye West. I realize he didn't have a lot of options since he can't fly and but that is a four and a half hour train ride he just took from Prague to Berlin. And I'm just saying, all the evil could be done already by the time he gets there, and I wouldn't be surprised. In case you confused it with Berlin, New Hampshire. I don't think you know what's real, Peter. Peter. I just can't give enough sins for this movie wants to excuse as the work of drones that could never be the work of drones. Add 10 now! I created Mysterio to give the world someone to believe in! You created Mysterio to be poison? If you were good enough. Maybe Tony would still be alive. But Tony's death in Endgame wasn't Peter's fault. Look, this sequence is visually arresting, and that's worth praise. But it's undercut by the knowledge that all of this is being done by drones, which is hilariously impossible. It's easy to fool people when they're already fooling themselves. What does that even mean? At least in the context of this movie. You fooled Peter just now because you have lookalike drones, not because Peter was out here f***ing up his own mind with needless quandaries. But for what it's worth, Peter, I really am sorry. Terrific train timing! When and how did they plan this? Okay, we'll come pick you up in the Netherlands. We'll meet you at the edge of that one large field of flowers. You're never gonna be Iron Man. Good, then for the love of God, skip! You're the head of security and your password is password? I, I don't feel good about it either. Movie has time for this. Oh, I love Led Zeppelin! How does a kid as pop culture savvy as Peter was in Infinity War and Homecoming mistake ACDC for Led Zeppelin? Or is the movie making a joke about his probable concussion? Okay, people, no Avengers coming. We're good to go. But why aren't any Avengers coming? Fury has already decided he can't rely on Spider-Man, so why couldn't he call someone? Falcon, Rhodey, Doctor Strange, Asbestos Lady? It's literally not a Spider-Man movie if his love interest isn't in danger and needing him to rescue them. Like the Power Rangers! 
You think you can Voltron? Who? Voltron? You think they were making all this up as they went about filming it? Be ready for anything. Then she went to the roof with the bazooka and saves him when the drone appears and is going to kill him. And I guess they knew about the drones already from Happy's warning. Regardless, I'm more curious how be ready for anything became shorthand for one of these drones is definitely going to show up outside this window and try and kill me, so you should go to the roof with a shoulder rocket. Edith, give me some protection. Copy. If Beck has Edith, I'm not sure why he even needs the drones anymore. He has an entire satellite of weaponry at his disposal to do whatever he wants. Can we get some villains with at least a little more creativity than the Batman Forever Riddler? That's all I ask. <laughs> this movie is a lot more Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom than I think they were going for. Happy, thank God! I bought us some time. And apparently some amazing earpieces. Happy and the kids are in a goddamn vault and still able to communicate with Peter. Spider-Man does some stuff, but I'm not honestly sure what any of it was. I'm sure it was awesome and devastating to the drones, but I'd need a transcript of the events to know what the f*** just happened. Gee, I wonder what this bridge is. It's London Bridge, right? Great. No webs. That seems unnecessary. He just started using this suit. He used up all his webbing already? Why do you have to strip him of one of his tools of the job in order for the finale to have stakes? Nobody dies on my watch. I mean, technically Iron Man did. I wish that my life playing video games and we're gonna die. I have a fake ID and I've never even used it. This confession right before we die trope has been done before and to death, but probably never better than an almost famous. Okay, that was badass. Wow, Peter went from struggling with his Peter Tingle to seeing blind like Daredevil. And I'm calling bull If it was so easy, all he had to do was wish for it a little bit, then why the struggle to use it before now? You're in the strike zone. The chance of getting no, hit is- FIRE! ALL THE DRONES! NOW! This guy is even dumber than Kent Mansley. I'm sorry it's broken. I actually like it better broken. Of course you do. Are you sure no one else has figured it out? Yeah, I mean... It's not like anybody really pays attention to you. Secret identity shadowing. Hello, Gerald. Could mother not make it? Holy sh This is a dark final beat for Flash Thompson. Almost like they might be setting him up for something more antagonisty in the next installment. What is that on the white plate on the end table next to Aunt May? Is it sushi? A peppermint stick biscotti? A skinny breakfast burrito with ketchup drizzle on top? White chocolate pretzel with raspberry? Spider-Man attacked me for some reason. He has an army weaponized drone, Stark technology. But who's gonna believe all this? There should be tons of citizen and surveillance video of the Tower Bridge attack. London is one of the most heavily surveilled cities in existence, and Spider-Man clearly beat the hell out of some drones and shit. People will figure out the video is doctored even before all the video evidence is unearthed. This is some bullshit, is my point. And here's J. Jonah Jameson, back now as an online news pundit, because I guess they felt the same way about J.K. Simmons in this role as they did James Earl Jones in the role of Mufasa, which is that no one could ever replace them. But it breaks continuity, pulls me out of the movie, and Carl Urban or Timothy Oliphant could have pulled off a slightly new different take on the character just fine. Also, does this mean this movie is in the same universe as Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies? Because it kind of does, even though they will tell you it does not. So, Fury and Hill, all movie were actually these two Klingons from the Captain Marvel movie. Bum, bum, bum. But that's stupid. Fury's on vacation? What the f***, guys? This is lame. It also sort of suggests you might still end up doing that thing where anyone at any time in the MCU might be a scroll, which would be a huge cop-out. Tony didn't die, it was scroll Tony! My salmon don't swim upstream the way they're supposed to. Ever since CinemaSins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins. And now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes. Excited about the science trip? Hey, uh, yeah, we're just talking about the trip. You guys are losers. But then why do you sit with us? Because I don't have any friends. You should probably download a VPN on your phone just so that the government can't track you while we're abroad. Will do. She's got the crazy eyes. The pony. Because I thought that was just theoretical. I mean, that completely changes how we understand the initial singularity. We're Nerd! The battle station is heavily shielded and carries a firepower greater than half the Starfleet. I'm sorry, did you say Prague? Oh, I've been to Prague. Well, I haven't been to Prague, been yeah. to Prague, but I know that thing. I know that stop shaving your armpits, read the unbearable lightness of being, fall in love with a sculptor, now I realize how bad American coffee is thing. I'm Peter Parker. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. It's the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Together we burn the village! Burn the village! And, uh, rape the horses! Then everyone will listen! The King of the North! 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 Yeah. <laughs>